Welcome everyone to another episode of The Elevator Show. And I'm Kirk Buckner along with Chris Meridian. How you doing? Doing good, Kirk. How's it going tonight? Doing good, doing good. Getting ready to, because uh, the, the headquarters of Notton Hall of Fame is, are, is a set to move. And there's all these things because the fine people in Seattle, Washington made an offer that we couldn't refuse. <laughs> so they're they're taking us away from Winnipeg. That's right. We're bringing you down, uh, down to the States here. Yes, during an election year. Can't wait. Hey, it'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. But here's the on the show that Chris and I do monthly. We look at the past month and we say, who has made their Hall of Fame case stronger over the month and who has it? And we don't tell, well, we did actually, we know that, usually we don't tell each other what we have, we just the amount. We did say, like prior to, that we got one major elevator down, so that we're going to close off with. Uh, so I've got two up, three down. You have... Three up, one down? I have three up and one down, correct. Okay, uh, maybe I'll just start then since I've got more, I guess. Sure, fire away. Okay. Uh, so I'll start off with an elevator down, and this one's pretty simple. I don't have to spend too much time on it. It's uh, Ronda Rousey for the WWE Hall of Fame. Now, I, I know you're not a big WWE person, so I won't uh, belabor this one too much. Uh, Ronda Rousey just put out, another, put out a book, and excerpts came out of it where she... In other interviews that she's done, she really, really hates everything WWE these days. Uh, so this is not because of anything that she's done, basically because of everything she's saying. Now, a lot of her vitriol I can understand. Uh, a lot of it is sort of dedicated towards Vince McMahon, who's no longer there. But the overall culture is something that I think just turned out to be not for her. Uh, she had a great debut when she started she was in a mixed tag match against triple h and uh and his wife stephanie mcmahon and she kicked ass she first ever match and she knocked it out of the park a year later she's in the main event at wrestlemania becoming the first uh first group of women herself becky lynch and uh oh god i'm blanking uh charlotte flair uh, uh the main event of a wrestlemania by women that never happened before but somewhere along the way, the fans just turned on her, and not necessarily in a good way. They they turned on her, and she didn't know what to do. And she was lost ever since. In the three years that she was there, she went from game changer to, ugh, there she is. <laughs> I don't know how that happens to a star of that magnitude. Would she be worthy of a WWE Hall of Fame spot at one point? I, I honestly think she would, based on their standards it's not particularly high but if she means everything that she's saying right now she might be in the mind that she would turn that down should it ever come yeah it's interesting i i don't know the quotes that you were you're attributing from her book um so i'll have to look into that i do know that once she got out of the um out of the octagon there she had a lot of different roles to go she Took her hand at uh, acting. You know, she was in one of the uh, Expendables movies there. Uh, she, I didn't see it. Was she any good? It's the Expendables, so no, you, don't, okay. you really kind of have to. You kind of have to lower your your standards for uh, acting within there. But um, and, and obviously, you know, the WWE run there. So interesting. Obviously, like, as you mentioned there, some something changed in her and. Uh, Sounds well, like she kind of kind of burned that bridge there. Well, what she's saying with uh, about Vince is com completely accurate. Just a, a lot of the what she's saying probably didn't pertain to her all that much. So I, I don't know if this is just being sour. If this is just because the ghostwriter just sort of like did a cup did a few things on her behalf, which is possible. I've ghostwritten. I've done it. <laughs> And, and for a wrestler, so <laughs> I, I I did I did do it for a wrestler. Not this one. I didn't write this one, and no. I'm never going to do another one again. So if you're a pro wrestler out there looking for someone to write their autobiography, it's not going to be me. <laughs> I'm not doing that again ever. One was enough, and I did get some great stories out of it and uh, built a, a friendship. So I, I am happy I did it, but I don't need to lather, rinse, and repeat on that one. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Good, uh, stuff. Good one. Yeah. Okay. So, what what have you got? We'll uh, turn it over to you. Yeah. Let's, uh, since I got the ups uh, ups here, uh, I'll start with uh, baseball. Mm -hmm. um, 
I decided to go with Blake Snell this month. Um, oh, interesting. Because he because he signed a contract. <laughs> <laughs> Blake Snell um, been in the league now for I think it's eight years, eight or nine years, nine years. And um, you know he's two time Cy Young winner, two time mm-hmm. ERA leader, champion, whatever you all call it, and coming off of another very strong season last year. Basically went into spring training with, um, as part of the Boris group, and just was not getting the the offers that they they were expecting. So he kind of sat on the sidelines for quite a while there. Mm-hmm. And with the way baseball has changed over the years now, with pitchers being treated with uh, more than just kid gloves, as far as um, how many innings they're allowed, games they're allowed to pitch, time off in between, everything else like that it's hard for a starting pitcher to really compile the old traditional numbers that used to be kind of um, benchmarks for a hall of famer, you mm-hmm. know, a 300 win career, 3,000, 3,500 3, strikeouts, things like that. I mean, he's been in the league, you know, pitched eight seasons now and has not even eclipsed a thousand innings pitched yet. So mm-hmm. for starting pitchers, it's going to be more on, you know, stuff like, um, championships, uh, ERA titles, things like that. Uh, Cy Young's obviously big. So having a couple of Cy Young's already, um, you don't really want to be missing too much time at the beginning of the season to get kind of ramped up for the for the year to go, considering how, how little pitching there actually is in a season now for a starting pitcher. Um, with teams actually some going six-man rotations, things like that. So mm-hmm. uh, getting – you landed actually in a pretty good situation for a pitcher there. San Francisco has got a pretty pitcher friendly ballpark. Um, team may not be the strongest it's been in the past, but um, you know, he should still be competitive and be able to put up some, some strong numbers and continue to build that uh, resume that he started early in, earlier this uh, well, the last eight years. Yeah. Uh, Snell's an interesting pitcher. Uh, if he follows his pattern, he's going to stink this year. <laughs> And then be phenomenal the year after. Okay. Could be, but again, it's it's another uh, another contract year for him. So yeah. we'll see what happens. Yeah, he. Uh, I think I had him once as an elevator down, just because he rubbed a lot of people the wrong way during the pandemic. Where, what was the quote he did? Uh, well, when he's whining about money, nobody wants to hear that from during a pandemic when a lot of us couldn't work. Right. Yeah, yeah. but. I don't remember what, what it exactly was, but it wasn't yeah, too. I, it wasn't a smart, smart thing for him to say. No, no, not at all. Okay, uh, so I guess we'll go next. I've got with the. I'll, I'll stay on the on the bright side here. Uh, so my elevator up, a uh, pretty easy one. Also, again, uh, is Sean O'Malley in UFC? Uh, O'Malley just uh, made well, not just it was a couple of weeks ago, but at the main event of UFC two nine uh, two hundred ninety nine. Uh, he successfully defended his first title defense of the Bantamweight title and defeated the, defeated the person who has his own, who has his only blemish. So he's only lost once, uh, any champ, not any champion, but the UFC hall of fame is not the hardest to get into either, even though it's relatively new. So a champion who has successfully defended a title is a draw and he's one of the bigger draws right now in the sport. They love that. What more do you really need? They he may have done enough already. Like literally, it's it's almost that simple for him to do that. And he's only twenty nine, so he's got a lot more in him, presumably. We'll we'll see where he goes from there. He's pro- I would argue right now that he might be one of the top five names in the sport. Yeah, definitely a charismatic guy, um, really entertaining, and a hell of a fighter. There, uh, happy to see him defend his title there a couple weeks ago. So. Um, yeah, he's uh, one of those guys that uh, I think he, you know he draws draws fans to the sport too, which is obviously a positive when uh, when talking about um, the UFC. You know, the the bigger the the more it can grow, the the better it's going to be for all for all all those guys in there Absolutely. and gals. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, that that was a pretty simple one. So I guess you got another. One. I guess we'll stick with your another up. Sure. Um, we'll jump over to the world of hockey. And uh, the same one. <laughs> I was gonna say, has has anyone had a wider Hall of Fame career than Andre Kopitar? Oh, okay. No, it's not the same. Okay, yeah, go, go same. On. All right, cool. 
Anze uh, this past month uh, scored his 1,200th point, career point. So he's already got um, well over 1,300 games played now, 1,200 points, two-time cup winner with the Kings, um, two-time Selkie winner, two-time Lady Bing winner, uh, Mark Messier award winner. Mm-hmm. He's pretty much uh, outside of like uh, scoring titles or any, you know, hard trophies, things like that. Um, he's, he's pretty much done it all for, for the Kings there and does not seem to get any attention for the career he's had. And I personally, I don't think there was really any, any doubt going into this season that he had already kind of punched his ticket for the pro hockey hall of fame, but you know, to add another milestone number, like 1200 points, right. Just, you know, it just helps bring his, his career to uh, more people's attention. Okay. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm a huge fan of his. Uh, the only time I openly rooted against him was uh, when he was on Team Europe, if you remember that debacle. <laughs> like, in, like in 2016 when they did the that, World Cup of Hockey. Yeah, yeah, okay. That's and what I was had, thinking. So. Yeah, and they had these stupid teams, like three, mm-hmm. like two stupid teams. Team North America of uh, Canadians and Americans under 23 or 23 or under, and Team Europe of, of, of any European who wasn't from uh, Sweden, Finland, Russia, and the Czech Republic. And Kopitar is, I believe, from Slovakia. Slovakia, yeah. yeah. So, and then I remember having this debate with people. I said, this is going to be awesome, but it's going to suck. What if they win? <laughs> and they almost they almost did. They were in this, they, they won silver. They finished second. Yeah. So, like, so let's say they win. Uh, you know, you look at that loaded team. Dreisaitl was on that team, you know, from Germany. Uh, like Germany, I, yep. There was... It was a loaded team that, so, okay, they win. Let's say they would have won that all. Are they going nuts in Slovakia? No. Mm-hmm. Are they going nuts in Germany? No. Are they going nuts in Denmark? No. Stupid. Yeah, yeah when you do something like that, you need to to really keep it to the uh, to the country level. I mean, that's... Absolutely. It gives you, you know, you rally around the flag, and there was a real flag to rally around there for that team. Well, same if what if North America won? Yay! <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna stick with hockey for my other for my last elevator up. Okay. Uh, it's someone who I think is cemented this month. He's gonna win his first Hart Trophy this year. Uh, I've I think it's gonna be Colorado's Nathan McKinnon, who's taken over the league lead in points. Uh, he leads the league in point shares. He's been on fire lately. There's not much season left. For anyone to really knock him off his perch. Uh, this was early a battle between, I thought, Kuchinov and Pasternak. Uh, now it's McKinnon's. And what is he at right now? As we're recording this, uh, 123 points, 114.2 uh, point shares. Colorado is, they're an incredible team, period. And he's hes the player that everyone thought he finally could be. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. He's having uh, just a career season here. Um I think he's still got the uh, point streak at home that he's, he's been running up uh, pretty much all season there. He eclipsed Gretzky finally in uh, in that title or that uh, record there. So, yeah, you, you really can't uh, can't say anything bad about his, his season this year. And it's it's nice to see an, another name up there, another different name that's uh, getting the attention here. Colorado is going to be uh, a very tough. Uh, Tough get for anybody in the playoffs. Oof. Got that um, right. You know, if their goaltender can hold them, hold, them, hold them in there. They got the scoring. They got the, you know, the defense. They're going to be a uh, tough out for uh, anybody. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I guess we, do you have another up left or? I got one more up. Yeah, go ahead. Um, so this one, uh, we're going to go to the world of basketball. Oh, okay. Yeah. So this one's going to sound a little weird. So I'll warn you ahead of time. So we got uh, Gian- Giannis Antetokounmpo, mm-hmm. Damian Lillard, mm-hmm. Kevin Durant, Jason Tatum, Kawhi Leonard, Nikolai Jokic, Shaiyos Alexander, Anthony Edwards. All those players played their 65th game this uh, this past uh, couple weeks here, and that entitles them to be eligible for postseason awards. Mm-hmm. Uh, NBA because they're they had a rash of um, uh, load management where players are taking too many games off, they mm-hmm. set a floor of 65 games played in order to be eligible for postseason awards. 
Okay. A lot of those, a lot of those guys, you know, uh, Giannis, Lillard, Durant, you know, they've probably already punched their tickets to the Hall of Fame. But mm-hmm. for younger guys like Anthony Edwards, Shadildis Alexander, mm-hmm. and even somebody like Kawhi Leonard or Jason Tatum, you know, to maybe get a first team All NBA or a second team just to help uh, start their careers off, you know, building building those uh, postseason awards. Uh, it's kind of important to get that uh, that floor set. So they all reached that floor. So now they can all be eligible to be awarded at the end of the year. Okay. Uh, interesting take on that. Uh, I think out of all of them, the only one who isn't there is Edwards, but he's just so young. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I, I think he's got a good shot at getting an all, an all NBA for the first time. He, he does. Uh, I think but Gildas get one last year. Yeah. He was first team yeah. last year. Looks okay. like he's going to be first team again this year. Edwards be, yeah. is an interesting one because I think a lot of us expect Boston to get come out of the East. Mm-hmm. Ed, it's theirs to lose. The West to me is wide open. It's so what? Yeah. Yeah, I mean Denver still got um, got a real strong team. They got a good chance to to repeat there. Um, mm-hmm. Minnesota just kind of uh, I don't know how, how many people really had them as being you know, one, two, or one or two out of the, the West going into the season, but they've definitely I mean, risen to the top. Right, but then yeah. that's that's the other thing. So you have Minnesota and Oklahoma City who are going to be top seeds mm-hmm. uh, or like a high, high seeds who are unproven. And that right. rarely happens in basketball where an unproven team and the or unproven playoff team does super well in their first time out. But we will yeah, see. Um, It'd be interesting to see that. It definitely is going to be uh, exciting. You know, a couple of young teams that uh, on the ascend there. That's that's good for the good for the sport, mm-hmm. good for the fans. Uh, I got so I guess I got two more elevator downs, and then we'll just uh, close off with, with your elevator down. The one we, I, I think anyone sort of paying attention last week, know <laughs> where we're going to close off with. Uh, I'll start off with someone who I don't think was ever making the rock hall anyway, but now any his accolades are done. And that would be known Diddler P. Diddy. <laughs> I, I tried to ignore this story because I just don't. Well, it's a disgusting story. Long story short, uh, he. Well, he, he's going to he's been accused and written his home rated of child trap for not child trafficking, although that, that there is for sex trafficking. But then also he did have allegedly sex with with underage people uh long story short i thought this guy was a piece of shit years ago when his biggest hit was about his dead friend who he's probably at fault some way of hap- of making that happen shitty rapper overrated producer uh two although two years ago he was honored by bet for i think it was a lifetime achievement award i look i checked to see if he was in the hip-hop hall of fame he's not uh but the hip-hop hall of fame sort of been dormant for a while so if they are able to fund up get the funding that they're looking for he's not going in that one either no uh that great thing where they're showing they're showing clips of him uh, getting the key to the city in new york last year from eric adams i'm sure he'd like that one back good thing that key doesn't (laughs) actually work uh uh, yeah this guy's just The the shit i was reading about today that i didn't know about I we're, I don't even want to go into it. I'm not going. Yeah, probably. Yeah. Yeah, yeah probably, you know, but things better left to to uh, be unsaid yeah. there. Yeah. Um, I, no, it's, yeah, it's been a crazy story. Um, nobody knows where he is. You know, they, somebody said this, they, I guess his plane ended up uh, leaving the United States, but he wasn't on it. So who knows what what that was transporting so yes yeah, it's, yeah. It's, well i think the amount of shit that's going to come out between us recording this and this going up is going to be good well, we could probably fill the grand canyon with it it's going to be awful. yeah a lot of a lot of stuff that uh yeah. really shouldn't have ever happened and mm-hmm. you just wonder how something like this is allowed to continue on for what seems like as long as it did somewhere uh Cat Williams is saying, "I told you so." He's he's been uh, been able to say that a few times. Yep. <laughs> yeah. 
Uh, another one I'm going to have is an elevator down, but this is with an asterisk because, as, again, as we're recording this, there's going to be some more shit that's probably going to drop. And that's actually for the Hall of Fame that you are now part of the nominating committee of, the United States Athletics Hall of Fame. Uh, Kim Mulkey. I have her on this. Not necessarily... Well, so you heard about what, what what's going on between her and the Washington Post. She went nuclear against them because apparently they're dropping a hit piece on her. Mm -hmm. Now, had she not done that, probably they would have dropped their hit piece. And then like, I, I don't know how bad it really is. Like for everything they're saying on it might not even be that bad. It might just be repeating some of the other stuff that other people have said that, okay, she's, she, she's uh pro Trump. Okay. And she's, and she didn't tell Brittany, she told Brittany Griner to keep her sexuality hidden and other gay players. Okay. Kim Mulkey is one of those people, when you look at her, it's easy to, to dislike. I don't know whether she's a good person or not. I suspect she's not someone I really want to hang out with. I suspect that she's somebody who, I mean, I'm not, not that I'm Mr. Blackwell, but God damn it, who dresses this woman? <laughs> Jesus. But whatever is sort of going to come from this, she's now made, made sure that it's going to be a lot more attention on her. And no matter what it is, she's going to be labeled as a homophobe, whether I don't know that she is, other than just saying, well, maybe we might find out some things. Don't know. Uh, you, I know that Brittany Griner had said that. First off, if anyone thought that, if, if, was anyone, I don't, I don't think I'm, I'm going to sound rude for saying this, but hold up your hands. If When you first saw Brittany Griner, you thought, man, you know what? I hope she finds the right guy. Said no one ever. Yeah, also, so I would do there. Yeah, and so let's say she did say this to Brittany. That would have been between 2009 and 2013. Uh, and let's say it was in 2009 right away, or 2010, you know, when, when she was a freshman at Baylor. Barack Obama in 2008, in the, in the Democratic uh, debate, along with all of them, I believe. I know Hillary did. I don't remember. I think it was just those two said that he was not pro-gay marriage. Mm -hmm. That was the standard at the time. That Exactly. So if that's something that Kim said in 2010, eh, Chris and I are old enough to remember when a lot of people were thinking that way. Now nobody gives a shit. I can't tell you the last time I ever heard anyone say they're, they're anti-gay marriage. Have you? Like, when's the last time you heard that? Probably can't even remember. Um... No, they can't remember. I, so it, it doesn't come up. Hell, I mean, at the bar I go to regularly, uh, just right where I live, I met my first ever trans kitten. I, I, eh? Okay. I have, I, I have a lot of questions, but I don't ask them. I, I You do you. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know if she was just trying to get out in front of it or... If she kind of had an idea of what's what was in there. Um, That's what I wonder. Is, yeah, it's you know, like I said, it's it's clear that she was she was given a heads up by somebody. Um, wanted to get her words in first. Um, used a pretty pretty big uh, platform to do it. You know, it's in mm -hmm. the um, March Madness. Well, um, if this was going to come out during March Madness, and we don't even know when it's dropping, if it's dropping. Right, right. Uh, but, um, minutes, but if it's just sort of like repeating the same shit, I don't know that it makes that much of a difference, but it, ha this, it it's having the Streisand effect. There's a lot more people talking about her saying that players seem to really respond to her. Uh, yeah. We'll see. I mean... Because she's already in. Yeah. Sorry, God. Yeah, so I think it's going to end up being a lot of, you know, maybe uh, he said, she said in some instances here, which, um, no, you don't think so? No, I said, I don't know. Uh, oh, you don't know. Yeah. yeah no, um, I don't know. Uh, where, you know, people are just going to, I think, gravitate to one side or the other, um, regardless of what the stories actually say. Who knows? I, I, if I'm I'm really curious. Obviously, I think she thinks it's pretty pretty bad, to the point where if she's sort of already threatening to sue, 
<laughs> over what who the who the hell knows this game yeah, we don't know what be nothing yeah you know because again i'm just repeating some of the things that we already know about her okay again but here's the real piece who dresses this woman no comment <laughs> <laughs> now uh, and i guess we'll close off with uh the one who man the big one yeah when everybody's uh, everybody's talking about right mm -hmm. we talked about it last week so i'll be all let you yeah. open but yeah so i mean we talked last week i i was kind of the impression that this would try to this would be something that uh major league baseball would do their their damnedest to, to sweep under the rug get closed up as quickly as possible mm -hmm. Uh, drop their their investigation with you know starts and ends with his interpreter and that's it. But um, reading that the you know this is actually something that the IRS is now involved with because of the um, the bookie that's that's there. This is not going to go away quickly. Oh. Um, and the um, statement that uh, Otani was given to read. Um, the, the best uh, analysis I saw coming out of that was from uh, Andrew Brandt, who um, I follow him on, on X or uh, remember him from his days with the uh, Packers front office there. So his take was either Otani is not telling the truth or he has the worst best friend, interpreter, accountant, manager, agent, bank in history to allow this to have happened to him. So pretty... Um, Lays it, lays it pretty uh, pretty bluntly there that uh, he doesn't buy what uh, what's being pushed out there. Um, I think there's way more to it than what we've been allowed to to know so far. Mm -hmm. The the um, IRS being involved, I think, is probably the biggest um, biggest hindrance to baseball being able to sweep this away as quickly as they wanted to. Um, not going to pretend to know what's going to happen or know anything else, but I kind of lean towards this is not going to end well for Otani. Yeah. Cause you, that quote you read by uh Brant is spot on. I think that's what a lot of us are thinking. Either Otani has really poor choices and friends and he only seems to have one or it's a great choice in friends because this guy is going to take up, take a massive uh, fall for him which looks like that's what's probably gonna, gonna gonna be the case because again we have to believe that otani well i mean it's it is easy to believe that he, it's again this is still possible i i do want to like mm -hmm. unlikely but it's still possible from everything that we've read everything that you read i've read and that's been put out there these two were the best of friends inseparable like, I, does Otani even need an interpreter at this point? It's probably more of a comfort thing than, yeah. than anything else. You can kind of use them to, as a, a reason to not have to give interviews. Yeah, I, th I think that might be it. I mean, I, I honestly don't know how good good or bad Otani's English is. Mm -hmm. No clue. Uh, I, I will say, though, I'm, I'm being asked, I said this last week, to believe an awful lot. And... Because again, Otani's name was on that. The story changed within twelve hours, and it's changed I, multiple times, hasn't it? Yeah, but I mean, like, or like right after that, uh, Ipe uh, g gave that uh, statement to ESPN. Then twelve hours later, it's it's because what retracted? Was, yeah, 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 retracted. Like, oh, uh, Shoei offered to cover to uh, cover my debts. Da 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 da. And then it was like, oh, Shoei had no knowledge that I was doing any of this. Yeah. I mean, what what bookie is really you know lending a uh, credit line of four and a half million dollars to an interpreter? He he had to know that you know it was backed right. by you know some real money there one way or the other. So either either this guy really is uh, got a gambling problem, Otani's got a gambling problem, or yeah, his, it's just the, the biggest problem no job. is that is that he's bad at it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, like for him losing four, like four, four and a half million dollars for him, right? It, it, that's no big deal. Saying that he could lose a whole lot more because I was, I'm just, I just thought about this now because he signed that deal with the Dodgers, where mm -hmm. everything now is like future dated. So if they yeah, can get, 
so let's say hypothetically he plays this year and then next year in the next off season. Cause I remember like with the, with the white Sox and the black Sox scandal, not that I remember, I wasn't there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm old. I'm not that old, <laughs> but you're also in the movie. Yeah. But yeah, it's all the movie. Uh, they played another year. Mm-hmm. So let's say that the same thing sort of happens. It's found that Otani really, really did do this. Manfred's got to suspend him, right? I'm pretty sure the same rules are in place that have been there for forever. That, you know, the gambling is, is um, not allowed, even though everybody, all these professional sports are now embedded with the, uh, the gambling sites, the gambling companies. I still think the players themselves are. Well, I think they can gamble. They just can't bet gamble on baseball. Because now really? they now they now they are allowed okay. to gamble. I, I could be wrong in this. I could have sworn I just read this. Okay, they are allowed to gamble, but they ha- has to be with reputable companies, i.e., companies that they're probably aligned with. Yeah. So again, that's why we say Otani's got a gambling problem. He's very bad at it. <laughs> yeah, I was trying to think back to some of the other leagues, like um, mm-hmm. the NFL suspended uh, was it Calvin Ridley for a year. Uh, um. The NHL suspended uh, Shane Pinto for about two thirds of the season, mm-hmm. you know, and I don't know that they were necessarily gambling on, on their sport. So every league's going to handle it differently. Right. Um, I mean, our, our obvious, you know, example that you and I are probably most familiar with is Pete Rose because we grew up with him, mm-hmm. you know, and I know he was gambling on baseball. Yeah. Uh, argue whether or not he was gambling on his team to win or lose, but um, I know that he was gambling on baseball at that point. So, and obviously gambling back then in the uh, mid to late eighties was a lot different than this today as far as the legality of it. Well, I, I guess also to when I'm going back to the whole contract thing. So let's say he would have signed, signed it per year. So then he would have had 30 million this year. No, right now he's only going to get paid two. Mm-hmm. That doesn't even cover half his gambling debts. I, I, I think I think the the you know, I suppose it doesn't. <laughs> S- saying that, so then he I mean, he gets suspended and then banned. I, I I don't know that he will. I mean, again, we're being asked to believe a hell of a lot, but it all it, he could be telling the truth. I doubt it, but because we know virtually nothing about Otani, this was his buffer. This guy mm-hmm. was his buffer for everything. Like I think he, like you hit the nail on the head, so that he didn't really have to talk. Otani doesn't speak much at all. You don't see, you don't even see uh, interviews like from him in Japan too much. He just doesn't say much. So this well, guy, thing, go ahead. I'm oh, sorry. I was one other thing. He's not, he's the face of baseball, but he doesn't really advertise for baseball. You know, he's probably their most popular player, but you don't see him in any commercials. You don't, I don't know, maybe the uh, Angels last year, the Dodgers, you know, had him for some local stuff, but I don't remember seeing him really, you know, pushing anything, even like, you know, for, for um, the league itself. Yeah. Uh, and he could be, you know, super shy. Now, mm-hmm. how is he going to, because he's not eligible for a hall yet anyway, because baseball, you have to play 10 years. He's not at 10 years. So it's possible that he gets popped out out of the league so because if he doesn't make 10 years that's it that's it period uh elevator shut down uh but now without his comfort zone what happened what happens to his play this year especially if he's hiding a massive secret yeah that's gonna be interesting interesting thing here um i know they've had some they have the soul games or something like that uh yeah yeah they had that so i mean he's, he's got some games in um we'll see how that that plays out here it could you know it could really be a a big uh snowball effect you know he just gets off to a bad start and as you mentioned doesn't have his his buffer there that to kind of best friend to bounce just conversation off of let alone you know baseball stuff off of just to kind of get you know feeling comfortable again yeah as there there's good i don't think there's it's even that much more other than yeah, he probably did it. Yeah. You know, I, it's 
but then I also have mixed feelings about it too, because as as we've said, and, and most everyone is saying, it's so hypocritical when they ESPN's got ESPN bet on as as a side as a side uh, tab that you can go on. Every game you see the betting line, yeah, on everything. For them, for baseball to take another loss with, and, and you're right, somebody who they don't market particularly well, who doesn't want to market himself particularly well, then what? I mean, baseball seems to always survive in spite of itself. Like how? How does it continue to survive and do this well, make so much money, get so much attention when there's very few actual real stars of the game? Because there's so much of it. I mean, the, the season is the longest season in, among um, the major sports, you know, most games. Um, 30 teams, so, you know, 30 cities, 30 markets. The history of it being around since the turn of the century. Um, the legacy of the game, the, the players that have come in the, you know, before, the Ted Williams, the Nolan Ryan's, the Babe Ruth's just kind of continue to carry on. Uh, I don't know if you, I don't think you, um, I don't think you're a big uh, card collector, but um, nearly um, all, all the um, current issues have many players of the past that are sprinkled in with their, uh, with the modern players the, of today. So they continue to, to keep those names out there through that kind of marketing. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting. I mean, it's always been considered the national pastime here in America. Uh, football is clearly past it as far as the most popular sport in America. By so far. I think that, yeah. Oh. So I think it's more just, uh, just nostalgia that, it, that people just kind of fall back to it as during the summer is something easy to sit back and watch. Yeah. It'll be really interesting moving forward. I have a feeling Again, there could be more stuff dropping between this recording and then when this goes up. <laughs> so exactly. On so much of this. Well, as yeah. always, this has been a lot of fun. Uh, check out a lot of other things that we're doing. Uh, actually, coincidentally, we, we talked about Pete Rose. Uh, I've been doing a lot more interviews lately. And so check out some of those on Not in Hall of Fame. Uh, one actually that you helped out with, with uh, Pack Daddy. That was fun. Yeah, Ryan Schlipp. He's a good guy. Um yeah. Is that, one, is that one up yet or is it going up soon uh, it'll probably go up soon it's not up yet okay uh, i'm recording on friday with a gentleman named keith o'brien who just wrote a book about pete rose oh interesting yeah so uh i'll be chatting with him shortly and yeah it's it's, it's actually very interesting i'd yeah, say timing turner but i got they, they gave me the digital copy so it's real this turner okay <laughs> <laughs> Modern days. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Exactly. For those just listening, I'm pretending to swipe up. <laughs> Can't really dog your the page that way. Yeah, I, I don't even know what to swipe. If you're interested in somebody, you're supposed to swipe right or left. I don't know. I, yeah, I'm glad. the wrong guy, man. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, there we go. All right. So with that, wherever you are, wherever you may be, make it a fantastic day because it never comes again. Take care, everyone. Good night.